The internet world is going to be changed in coming months. By internet world, I meant the Wi-Fi world. Federal Communications Commission voted today to open up a plot of spectrum in 6 GHz band for unlicensed use. It means we are gonna get a new radio frequency band and that will be allowed to be used for Wi-Fi cause it's unlicensed, anyone can use it. This is a monumental decision around Wi-Fi spectrum and it's 20 years of history. So what is this new 6 GHz Wi-Fi band? Why it is a big deal for all of us? Hey guys, this is Shankho here from Smart Bengali. We'll discuss this in today's video. So what is this new 6 GHz Wi-Fi band and why does it matter? To understand the importance of this new Wi-Fi band, first we need to know the current Wi-Fi situation. Wi-Fi technology uses radio waves to receive and transmit data. Currently we have two frequency bands, 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. The main problem with 2.4 GHz is that it's a very small band. The spectrum width is very narrow and a lot of people uses this band which leads to interference. Those of you are not aware of this, 2.4 GHz band is divided into 11 channels. Now what is the channel? It's like a sub-block within the given spectrum. With 2.4 GHz, there are only 3 non-overlapping channels that you can use. You can choose only 1, 6 or channel number 11. The rest channels overlap with each other. Imagine you are in a crowded area. Let's say you live in an apartment and most of the cases there will be more than 3 routers in your building. So there will be a competition between your router and your neighbor's routers to share the space in the spectrum. But in reality you don't have that much space in 2.4 GHz spectrum. So there will be interference which will degrade your signal strength. In turn it will lead to a slow or bad internet. And the more concerning thing is, 2.4 GHz isn't only used by your router. A lot of other electronic devices like Bluetooth, cordless phones, wireless mice use 2.4 GHz. It makes the situation really worse. In my opinion, currently the only reason to use a 2.4 GHz band is to get a higher range. Since this is a low frequency band, therefore longer wavelength, so it can travel further. So the wall penetration power will be better. So this 2.4 GHz radio frequency is commonly used by a lot of devices which makes it crowded and creates a lot of signal strength issues. To address these problems, 5 GHz band was introduced. 5 GHz band is 10 times wider than 2.4 GHz. 2.4 GHz was 100 MHz band but 5 GHz uses the entire 5 GHz band. Remember 2.4 GHz has 3 non-overlapping channels but 5 GHz has 24 non-overlapping channels to address the interference issue. So the 5 GHz band is way better than 2.4 GHz in almost every way. But there's a catch. The first one is quite obvious, it doesn't have the range like 2.4 GHz cause it's higher frequency so naturally it won't have that long range but it will have better speed. But the main issue I would like to point out is the DFS channels. 5 GHz band has many channels but in reality you can't use all of them. Most of them are dynamic frequency selection channels or DFS channels. These channels are some specific bands within 5 GHz band which use the same frequencies as radar devices. So there are some restrictions implemented by the government. Basically they said ok they will allow us to use the 5 GHz band but since the same frequency band is used by radar and important military applications. They made some regulations so that if there is a router device that is using one of these DFS channels then it must have some inbuilt programming. If it detects the radio signals coming in, it must switch to another channel or completely shut down broadcasting in some cases. Just to give you a real life example, if you live near to an airport, you don't want to use DFS channels cause this channel switching and unwanted interference will ruin your Wi-Fi experience. Within 24 non-overlapping channels of 5 GHz, in reality there are only 8 channels which are non-DFS channels. The rest of them are DFS channels. And the irony is, due to this channel switching complications, a lot of routers don't even allow you to select DFS channels. They only show the non-DFS channels in the firmware. So even if you don't live near to an airport, you have to sacrifice the DFS channels. So we can clearly see, even though 5 GHz frequency spectrum is way bigger than 2.4 GHz, but actually we can use only 8 channels effectively. Math tells us 8 non-overlapping channels are better than 3. But still we can't use the full potential of 5 GHz band, right? Another issue is, sometimes your router will combine two 20 MHz channels into one 40 MHz channel. So instead of 8 channels, you will have only 4 options. So these are the problems with current two Wi-Fi bands. And here comes the newly announced 6 GHz band. This new 6 GHz band will be branded as Wi-Fi 6E and it will be added 1200 MHz more in the spectrum. To be exact, it's gonna be 5.925 GHz to 7.125 GHz. To give you some idea, 2.4 GHz band can only support 180 MHz channel and excluding DFS channels, 5 GHz can fit 280 MHz channels. 
This new 6 GHz band will have 14 18 MHz channels and the best part is this new frequency band is free of DFS channels. So you can use the entire frequency band which is great news. On the downside, this is even higher frequency than 5 GHz so it will have less range and the wall penetration power will not be good. So it will have less range but if you look at the bright side, it will have less interference. It means much faster speed because you will be able to use more bandwidth. You can eliminate this short range issue by creating a mesh network using multiple access points which is quite popular in these days. Now you might ask, when can we expect Wi-Fi 6 GHz devices in stores? Well, this is just announced, a lot of paperwork to be processed. The FCC is opening up 6 GHz in US, but the people in Europe or other countries still have to wait to do the same for them. That means you won't be able to see the devices with Wi-Fi 6E anytime soon. Probably the deployment of devices will really kick off in early 2021 because it needs certifications from Wi-Fi Alliance. But the good news is, manufacturers have already started developing devices with this new Wi-Fi standard. Some companies like Broadcom already announced their new Wi-Fi 60 mobile chip BCM4389. Other chip manufacturing companies like Qualcomm, Intel, they said they'll have their chips ready in early 2021. And also the major router companies like Linksys, Netgear indicated that they are on board too. Personally, I think smartphones are likely to be the first consumer devices to adopt the Wi-Fi 60. Televisions and other devices will come after this. Before concluding this video, I would like to clarify one thing and that is why this new Wi-Fi frequency band is called Wi-Fi 6E, not Wi-Fi 6. This is because the Wi-Fi Alliance, the governing body who decides this kind of stuff, they had already announced the specs of Wi-Fi 6, which is a new Wi-Fi certification standard but it still uses the old 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz frequency band. So in order to distinguish between this new Wi-Fi frequency spectrum, which will soon become a new Wi-Fi standard and the existing Wi-Fi 6 standard. They named this new Wi-Fi standard as Wi-Fi 6E, not Wi-Fi 6. So if you see Wi-Fi 6 certified sticker on your network devices, it means it uses 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. But if you see Wi-Fi 6E certified sticker on your device, then it will use 6 GHz frequency along with the existing two bands 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz. So the tech industry seems to be changing around this new Wi-Fi 6 standard and I can't wait to see it. So that's it for this video guys. If you like this video, please hit the like button and if you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you in my next video. Thank you.